um, I would like to start with that one and show you this. The Ranks of Etchenstone. Um, question to you in the live chat. Um, do any of you know this? Do you already Have you already played it or is that new to you? Um, so let me just put all of that aside a little bit. We don't need that big box here anymore. Let me just put that down here. Okay, and these I will get out of the way for now as well. All right, so let's see. Is that, well, I might have to come a little bit closer. So let me just do that. Give me a second. That should hopefully work. So, because I'm actually able to pull up my table a little bit. I think that is fine. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Very cool. Mona is saying new to you. Well, that's perfect. Then I can actually show that to you in quite a good way. So let me just um, get that question out of the way for now. I might uh, I might put it on screen later on again. So um, just give me a second to see if I have to work on focus a little bit. Uh, I think there we go. That should be pretty good, actually. Okay, cool. Dustin Hendrickson is also in the chat uh, saying hello. Well, welcome to the stream. Um, I've decided that we will start with, where is it? Over here. Uh, Drawings of Etchingstone today. Um, and let's see how long we need. We might still have time for a few other games that I've put aside for now. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so there actually is a little story here for that game. Uh, let me just pull that up um, right here. Uh, Etchenstone, the last great nation under the wide reaches of Valorfall, is under grave under grave threat of a kind no one saw coming. Four ancient dragons have seized control of pivotal strongholds in every direction: north, south, south, east, and west. It's up to you, the strongest of the rare Ether mages, to make the perilous quest to each of these strongholds, defeat the dragons, and bring peace back to Etchenstone. So that is um, that is the story. So um, we are one of these, like the brave either mage, and we are like working our way through four different regions, and that you can see here in the in these halves of the card, so to speak. There are four regions, and we're just like working through that, um, defeating enemies, um, using movement to um, traverse these regions, and then at the end, when we have traversed all four regions, we are still alive, which I hope, then we will face one of these dragons. So um, I will not explain the entire game in detail like um, up front. I will just do it while I play as usual. That is the format I like the most. Um, Liz Benson is saying new to you, like the game. Um, looking forward to Aquarium. Gamecraft is local to me and I pick things up there. Very nice people. I agree that they're very nice people. <laughs> I'm in contact with them as well. And it's cool that uh, they're actually local to you. That is, I'm a little bit jealous there <laughs> because shipping is quite expensive to here still. Um, I think it will be better in the future. And Dustin is saying, Box needs some Buried Beneath from TGC. Uh, oh, you mean the game Buried Beneath. I have heard of that. I haven't played it yet. So uh, tell me something about it. What do you like most about it, Dustin? Okay, so um, what we do first is first we pick the dragon we will fight at the end, right? Um, so there are four dragons we can choose. Um, and they all have like a, a little bit like different uh, conditions to defeat them. I think the yellow one is one of the easier ones. And, but I think I want to have the red dragon, right? I mean, that fits my channel color. It will be harder. I cannot um, promise that we will win, but why don't we choose the red dragon? I think that's a pretty good idea. Um, and then what we will do is we will orient all the cards here. Maybe you can see it, I hope it's not too small. These are all I have this little crown with a two here. So we all orient them with the two at the top. Um, they also have a one and a three and a four here, right? These are like the different levels, like these weapons and spells um, can achieve. We can like level them up or have to even decrease their level. So I have already oriented them in, um, before the stream. I always do that at the end of a game. And let me just shuffle these up. There we go. And then, um, of course, while you're shuffling them, don't um, change the orientation. That's very important. And then we take the dragon that we will fight, put it at the top, put it right behind. And then we will put, like, orient the region card with the region one at the top. And we put it right behind with, like, the top half sticking out like this. Oh, yes, I should have mentioned, maybe, it's an in-hand card game. 
It's an 18 card in hand card game. So um, while you're waiting in the queue or at the doctors, you can just pull this out and play this without a table. It's pretty cool. You just need two hands for that. It's actually um, a in hand card game where you need like actively two hands instead of just one. But um, pro I promise you it's worth it, definitely. So um, yeah, let me just grab another drink quickly and then we can get started. I don't know how it is um, wherever you are located, but it's like really hot and humid here. It's it's horrible. It's really, really bad. Um, so I hope <laughs> I can last like two hours uh, during the stream. I hope so because it's getting really hot in here. All right, so what do we do? Well. Let me just, uh, you know, we will just start playing and I will like explain like the card anatomy and everything while we're playing. So what we do, we play like four rounds, so to speak, rounds, um, like these four regions. Um, we go through each of them and we do that until like all the cards here have been like, like uh, after we have gone through the entire deck and then we change regions. And for each round, so to speak, or for each turn, we take the top four cards of the deck here. And this, these are the cards we can work with. And then this one here is the reference card, the one that is now at the top of the deck, below these four that I uh, just took off. And here we see like at the top right, like on the right here, we see like either a skull or it can also be like this journey symbol here, right? Um, and then a number besides that. Up here in the in the region card, you see like at the top there are four enemies and at the at the bottom there are four re like four uh, journeys or paths. I don't know exactly know how they're called, um, like uh, where we can like traverse, that we, that we can traverse. What we do is now, this is the um, enemy symbol and that is a two. So we count from left to right, one, two. So we need to defeat this enemy right here. It's a little bit small, but I hope you can kind of see it, but I will just explain it to you. Each enemy has like a heart at the top left. That is the HP we need to uh, deal, like the damage we need to deal to defeat the enemy. At the top right is the experience points. We need that for upgrading the cards. You see here, like they have like, we have like points here where we can upgrade the cards. We need three to upgrade that one. Then we just turn it over and it becomes stronger. Um, and then at the bottom, we see like the initiative value. We see the attack value and the defense. Attack and defense are both red here. I will explain in a minute why that is important. Um, Morgan Knight is also, uh, Morgan Knight is saying it's the first day in a week that it hasn't been over 100. Oh yeah, okay, so you can kind of feel me, <laughs> I suppose. And Lord Richard is in the chat. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Skrithagos, all the way from Puerto Rico. Hope you are well. Thank you very much. I'm very well, except for the heat. Um, but apart from that, I'm totally fine. Great to see you. Yeah, I hope you're well um, as well. All right, so... That enemy we need to defeat. Um, what do we do? We need to, um, of these four cards, we need to choose three cards we will use. One of them we will use as the leader card. That's the one we like deal damage with or traverse with. Um, and you see here like in the middle, you see like this four and this is like attack, right? Or C uh, seven movement for traversing. We don't need to move at the moment because we're not at the bottom. We are using the top and we're defeating an enemy. So we need like attack. And we see that I'm really unlucky. <laughs> oh no, I'm really unlucky because I don't have any attack cards except that one. Well, normally it would be like this. Um, let's say this was seven attack, right? Then um, I could either choose the top, like the basic attack or the one, uh, the elemental one here. Uh, and the elemental one has like a gray background. Gray background would need mean that um, I need a second card to use as the element card. For example, this gray one here. And if I do that, then I can not, I don't have to play this one. I can actually play that attack here, right? If that were attack. So it would be seven instead of four attack. And then um, that element card also determines the initiative I have, that which is six at the moment for this card, right? Um, and then I would also choose a third card. And for the third card, I will use that plus to either boost my attack or traverse or movement, or I would use it to boost the initiative. That's a lot of info, but what that means is I need to hit two target values. I need to hit the initiative of four and the HP of 11. If I don't do that, I will show you what that means because then I receive damage. And that will happen because I will not be able to do anything like really worthwhile. So um, what I will do is I will use that attack up here at the top Right, um, that's like the only thing I can do. And I will use this card here um, as my element card to use for the for the initiative here. And then I will also use, let me just check. I think I will do it like this. And I will use the third card here 
This is the booster card for the boost of plus two, and I will apply that to my attack of four. So what happens now is first I check my, in so now I have prepared these three cards and now I check my initiative value, right? My initiative value is six. The initiative value of the enemy is four, so that's fine. I need to hit four or more and then I'm fine. If I don't do that, let's say I would have chosen that one or that one as the initiative, one or three, then I would have, been, have, would have had less and then I would take initial damage. The enemy does two damage, so that's something that I would, I would have to like uh, defend later on, right? Downgrade my cards with. But I don't take initial damage because I hit, because I met the initiative. Second thing, I'm ch second thing I'm checking is, do I do enough damage? I need to do 11 damage. I don't. I make do four damage plus these two. So that's six damage I'm doing. There are two outcomes. Either I, no, actually three outcomes. Either I hit the 11, then everything is fine. I don't receive damage and I receive the seven experience points. I'll show you later how I use that to upgrade. That's not the case. The second option is I have um, more than half of that 11. I have six, so that is fine. I have more than half, right? Round it up. So um, half would be 5.5, which doesn't exist. So that's fine. I hit that. So what that means is I do get the experience, but I also receive these two damage. Worst thing that could happen is that I don't even hit half. That means I don't receive experience, but I only receive damage. So that is a lot. That is a lot of um, information for now, but let me just play like two, three rounds and I think it will become a little bit clearer. But it's like, it's a really interesting concept and it works quite well once you have wrapped your head around it. Um, so what happened now? I don't receive initial damage because initiative is fine. And I do receive damage because I don't didn't, didn't hit the full HP, but also I get the experience. So let's deal with the damage first, always, right? Now we have like the, uh, the penalty phase, so to speak. So um, the enemy does two red damage and you see here these cards have these shields right so this card can block or like can like uh, yeah, can like soak three damage so if i receive two damage that means this card would soak all the damage but i would still have to downgrade it let's say um i would receive four damage i could soak that with three damage but i would downgrade it but i would still have to use another card to soak the last damage that there is so soaking damage only means like you only need to downgrade that one card right that is red damage that means if i block it with a red shield which i don't have at the moment but let's say this was a red shield that can block like twice the amount if it's red damage so this one can block like four yellow damage here that card right but that's fine um i can downgrade one card without without two damage um I kind of peek at the back to kind of see what's awaiting me later on. Um, let me downgrade this one then here. So what I do is I soak this two, these two damage I receive and I downgrade the card like this. That's it. And now of the other three cards, the other three cards I cannot upgrade. I cannot upgrade the cards I have downgraded, right? That's very important to know. So I have seven experience points and you see here I need three, three and four to upgrade. I cannot downgrade the same card twice in a round but I can upgrade the same card twice in a round, like upgrade them. So um, I think I will actually upgrade these two red ones here because red ones um, are quite interesting for me because of the red dragon. So um, I will upgrade that one to level three and that one as well. So now you see these are both at level three, the downgrade one at level one. How do we continue? Well, the three cards I have used, I put them at the back like this, give me a second. And the, the fourth card um, that I did not use, I can just use as the start of my next four cards I will use for the next encounter. So that was one turn. I know it's a lot to wrap your head around, but um, I think like in like a few more turns and I think the you will get the picture of how the game works. Um, so Dustin is saying, well, I'm biased because I designed it, but buried beneath is a solo hero defense worker placement. Ooh, interesting. In a mint tin. Set in a dark gothic fantasy world, you defend your village from invading monsters. Well, you actually know how to describe your own game. So that <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Uh, I should actually try to get that. That sounds like something I could like. And uh, Solo McLaughlin. Oh, great. Welcome to the stream. Haven't seen you in a while um, as well. Um, she's saying, I love games in a tin. There is something so cute about them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I definitely agree. I think I um, enjoy like these... Like these thin like tech uh, tuck boxes for cards a little bit more just because they're like better to transport right then those because the tins are a little bit thicker um but these tins are great as well i completely agree yeah um especially for games that don't only have cards right 
for sure. Okay, so um, next encounter. We again have a fight again enemy two. All right, so, so let's see here. We have some traversal. We have some attack here. That is good. That is not too bad. I'm worrying about the initiative a little bit. We need initiative initiative of three. Five, five, yeah. I think the best thing we can do is take this card here because if I um, use a red element card for that, we can deal eight damage. That's not too bad. I think that is pretty decent. Um, then our initiative is only two. As the booster, I will then take this red card here and I will apply that booster. It doesn't really matter either to the attack or to the initiative. I cannot fulfill any of those, but let me apply to the damage. Okay, so that is my choice for this turn. What's happening now? First, let's take a look at the initiative. I have an initiative of two, right? Remember the second card, the element card is always like where you draw the initiative from. So that's initiative of two, um, initiative of four. So we receive initial damage, which is damage of two. Let's just keep that in mind because we will do the damage all like in the penalty phase later on. So I receive two damage. Regarding the 11 HP, I do eight, right? Because I um, can use that element here because of the red card and I use the booster of plus three. So that is 11, 11 HP, 11 damage. So that's a full victory. That is great. That means I don't receive any damage there. All right, penalty phase, two damage. I need to soak. Um, this one does red damage, and I don't really want red damage later on for the dragon. So this is why I will downgrade this. You will see that when I fight the dragon. And then I have, again, 7 um, XP to upgrade. I will upgrade that for sure. So that is uh, actually... Yeah, I will upgrade that for sure. That is 3 HP. And then you see it ne uh, XP, I mean, and it needs another 4. I still have 4 left, so I will also upgrade that one. So now that one is as level four. That's max level. You see, no upgrade possible anymore. But that's not too bad. These three cards go to the back and I draw four cards again. So you see, actually, it's quite simple. You still need to see how these journeys work. And you will see it now because now we have a journey encounter. That is pretty cool. Um, all right. So um, journey number four. So the journey um, is a little bit small again, but I'm kind of explain to you what you see. Actually, when I'm looking closely, it's still for me kind of kind of hard to see. So um, the journey works differently. We have a journey value, like a movement value we need to hit. That is 10. And also we have like the penalty is one time. So we don't receive damage. We actually have a time penalty. I will explain that to you in a minute. And then the XP we get is three. The XP here is usually lower than for the enemies because journeys are a little bit easier usually. All right, so we need 10 traversal. We have nine here. That is not too bad. We actually have nine. Okay, so I will use the nine traversal here I because I can um, use the um, yellow card for that as the element, the yellow element. We don't need any initiative value. We just need to hit this 10. And what I can do now is now I can choose a booster. Um, let me just choose this one here as the booster, the plus one, that is enough. We only need to hit 10 uh, movement and we have nine here, so that's fine. Um, so we have the 10 already. Had I now used um, a gray element for the movement, because that is 10 gray right there, right? That's like a gray sign that you can not probably really see. Then I could use the fourth card as another booster, but that's not necessary anyway, right? So that's fine. So now we, for the journeys, we only check the movement. We need 10, we have nine plus one, that is 10. Totally fine. Had I not met this, I would have a penalty of one time. That means I take like the top card from the deck, like as many as it says there and put them in the back. That's just less time we have to level up, right? But that's not the case. Everything is fine. No penalty and I get three experience. And what will I upgrade? I actually don't really know. Let me just upgrade this one here, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Then we put these three in the back and draw four new cards. So we're almost, we're soon done with uh, region one, actually. Very cool. Nice. Let me just get another drink. A question for the chat again, uh, because now we are a little bit more people. Oh, we're actually quite a lot of people at the moment. Welcome to everybody else who has joined. It's great to have you here. Question to all of you. Um, uh, are there any of you who know the game already? Because I'd really like to know that. Um, all right, so. Let's continue. Now for the next encounter, a journey, the same journey again. Um, so let's see, we need nine movement again. Oh, that's kind of going to be kind of tough. Six. 
Oh, I don't think I can actually get nine movement. The only movement we have is right here. That's six. Plus a blue one would be... Uh, would, yeah, well, well, that's six then. And we still need plus two. And that won't work. Yeah, so we will have to take a penalty. Then I will just leave it like this. I'll just leave it like this. The way it is here now, I think. No, actually, let me do it like this, I think. Mm, no, it doesn't matter. Let's put it like this. Okay, so um, that's six plus the two over there. So we are now at plus eight, uh, at eight movement. We need 10, so we did not meet it. So we have a penalty of one time. So we need to take that card and put it in the back. And then I still get the three experience. Um, which will I upgrade? Let me upgrade the red one here. That's fine. Let me put these in the back. And we draw four new cards. Oh, which we can't. You see, there's the dragon card that is, that's at the back. So we're not able to draw enough cards to for a new for another turn. And if, when that's the case, that also includes four cards plus the reference cards, right? So that didn't work here. So that means now that the round is over. So what we do is we put them on the back. We put these two aside. You can actually also just put them in the pocket or hold them in a different way while you shuffle up the cards. Then without changing orientation, we shuffle all the cards from our deck. I almost uh, changed the orientation here by accident. So let's just do a quick overhand shuffle. That is fine. We don't need to make a science out of that. There we go, like this. And then again, we put the red dragon in the back and then we turn over the region card to Region number two. And now we continue that three more times and we try to level up. Of course, the journeys and also the um, enemies will become stronger. So, um, so uh, yeah, we need to kind of uh, try to upgrade our decks as, uh, as much as possible. Because at the end, we have like the end fight against the dragon and then we find out whether we win or lose. All right, we have a few more comments here. So Didi, ah, Didi, welcome to the stream. Great that you're here again. Uh, hey there, came late as well. No idea what's going on, but seems like one of those cards is being used instead of the entire board. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, so I'm like laughing and saying, I don't think I've seen this one before, what it's called. And then Dustin is saying, during some etching stone, exactly. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> so I'm McLaughlin saying, I mean, it must be the late the late kids to class. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And Ken is also here. Welcome, Ken. Welcome to the stream. All right, great. So, um, yeah, let's just continue, I'd say. I need, oh, it's so hot here, seriously. Okay, so um, we have an enemy. We have that one over here. So, and some enemies can have like these symbols there. You can hardly see it, but um, these symbols are actually at the back of this... Uh, of this case here, and I still have to look myself. So this enemy um, is a f uh, that freezes me. Discard unused card if you take initial damage. Okay, the initial damage was like the um, was the initiative thing, right? And then I would have to discard card number four. Well, that's not too bad. That could be worse things. So we need to hit an attack of thir uh, HP of thirteen. Can I do this? No, I cannot. And can, oh, but I have an idea. Let me just do it like this. And, oh, wait, no, that doesn't quite work. Let me do it like this here. Okay, so that is the hand I'm going with. So first, let's check initiative, initiative of five. The second card, my element card here, has an initiative of six. So no initial damage, everything is cool. Um, then, so that's fine, no initial damage. Then we need to hit 13. I only have six plus two, that's eight. I could have also used the plus five, but that would have been 11 also, so not enough. So um, so this is why um, we have more than half, that's fine. So we receive the seven XP, which is a lot, but we also need to take the damage. It's three blue damage. And now you see here, this card that we've actually, ah, it's just upgraded. But that is good to show you. Um, well, maybe we take a different one, I'm not sure yet. But this one, has like four blue damage. It could like block up to eight blue damage now because it's blue blue damage, right? And it's a blue shield, but that would be a waste. I'm actually gonna take this card here. Um, this is also at the top level, but it has like exactly three shields, right? So it can block the three damage. So let's downgrade this one. So I cannot upgrade this one here. Um, 
so wait that was the one in the back right that i didn't use yeah exactly so um now i get seven xp i would really like to upgrade these here this one is nice yeah i definitely want to upgrade this one that's five xp so this one is now at level four that's three red shields we need those for the red dragon later on and i still have two xp left let's um do that the rain of blood one time and that's it I still have one XP left, but there's nothing that costs one XP. So put these in the back and then we continue. Uh, Kenneth saying, good to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. And Didi saying, at first I thought this could be Gloomholden, but the cards didn't fit the style. Actually, Gloomholden, um, <laughs> I think it's, by this, it's also by Joe Kluffel, as far as I know, right? Um, and um, I wanted to actually print it and play it. And I looked at the rules and it, so many rules so many rules so i never really tack at the game i will at some point i hope but <laughs> i haven't done so yet all right so the next one is journey two but we do have like the lightning vault there and it says take as much damage as you do time penalty so we can actually get damage during that journey we don't want that so um journey two that is 13 a movement of 13. uh we have 10 here that we can do because we don't have a yellow card Seven won't work. Ew, that's pretty bad. Here we can choose seven attack or movement. So let's take this one here. That's seven, but we need, it's not, it's not blue. Yeah, okay, well, we can't, well, we definitely will receive damage. That is unfortunate. Okay, so I have now seven plus one, that's eight. That's more than half. So we do get the experience of seven, but we also have a time penalty of two. So we need to take two cards on, from the top of the deck and put it down here. And also we receive two damage, which I will block with this one here, with the rivers. Oh no, I can't with this one. Yeah, let me just block it with that one here. So, and I still have seven XP. So I will definitely upgrade this one here to level four. And I will upgrade that to level, oops, oops, to level two, sorry for the mess here. And then I still have, I think one XP left, but we have nothing to spend that on. So that is fine. Two, three, four. All right, now we have journey one. We need to have a movement value of 10. Easy. You see here, 10 already. That is perfect. That is perfect. So it doesn't really matter what we do here, but I would like to keep this one for next round. So let's just do it like this. Movement value of 10. We have that already with the 10 here and the element, the yellow one. So that was easy. So we don't have any penalties. Um, and we receive four victory points, which I will use to upgrade that one completely to level four. So there we go. So, and next round. Oh, and we're almost through with with the second journey, actually. Um, so my last one is saying, if the second Thakos is scared off by the rules, that's sign to beware. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, kind of, yeah. You know, I like reading rules, but Gloomholen, it was pretty, it was pretty intimidating, yeah. I, mean, I will play it at some point, but, you know, honestly, um, I'm playing a lot of games, and most games I'm actually not playing for myself, I'm playing for the channel. I'm so busy with the channel, like, like pushing out these three videos a week, and some videos take a long time. Like this Explorer video that I recently released took me at least 15 to 20 hours. I'm not kidding. So that's why I don't really have the time to read rules that are like so extensive if I don't have to, right? Like I don't have to do a review or I don't have to play it on the channel. So I will do it at some point when I have a little bit less to do, maybe toward the end of the year. Until like beginning and mid-October, I'm still really, really busy with the channel. A lot of reviews, a lot of important videos to push out. My top 30 videos will come out this year. So yeah, that's why I haven't tackled those rules yet. Dustin is saying it's the same designer as Gloomholden. Ah, like I said, yeah. And now the official mini Gloomhaven game on Kickstarter, which I backed, of course. Um, so indeed he's saying nobody got time for that, for those rules. Yeah, well, <laughs> kind of, right? All right, we have another journey here. We need to hit nine. We have seven, uh, no, six. I ha would have six here. Yeah, that works. So six with the blue element and plus four, that is 10. We need to hit nine, that's fine. And we get four experience. Mm, what do I upgrade? I think I want like a few like really high cards. So let me upgrade th this one here because this one lets me choose between um, movement and attack. Nine is pretty high, that's okay. And it's now level four, that's great. And now we pull 
oh, we can't pull the like enough cards anymore. So that means, as you know, we will end this round. So let's shuffle up these cards without changing the orientation. Morganite is saying, um, if I find myself falling asleep while reading a rule book, that's generally a sign to move on. Yeah. Or another thing that can happen, Morganite, is when you read the rules and you're quite versed, like you're quite good at reading rules, and you don't understand anything while you go through the rules like half an hour. Um, that's really frustrating. I really get mad then, right? That just recently happened to me a few months ago, and I haven't touched the game since, although I was really looking forward to checking it out. It's now in my cupboard uh, over there in like one of these, um, yeah, one of the cupboards and I am not using it. I'm not playing it anymore for now. Um, I will, actually, they have just put out a new rule book. So that one is supposed to be better, but still, uh, I'm kind of scarred for now. All right, so, and now we go to region number three. Oh, we're halfway done with the game, almost. All right, so let's see, four cards, and we will do an enemy, and there is like this, the hazard. Lose one time for each time you take damage. Ooh. All right, so that's enemy number two, 14 health. Ooh, ooh. We can do eight. That's okay. Initiative six is good. They have initiative of four, so we don't take initial damage. That is good. So I do 8 damage. I need to do 14. There's no way. There's no way to do it. Um, there's no way I can do that. So I'll just leave it like this for now. So I do 8 damage. Um, I can use my my booster of 2. That's 10. But I... Oh, no, wait. Initiative first. Initiative of 6. I need to hit 4. That's fine. No initial damage. So now I do 8 damage plus 2. 10 damage of 14. That's more than half. So that means I receive the XP of 8, which is a lot, but I also need to block 3 damage. Mm, I would have liked to upgrade these two. Well, actually, I can block it with this one here. That one has exactly three, um, 3 shields, so let me just block it with that, and then I will upgrade these two with 8. This one to level 4, nice, and this one to level 3. That is wonderful. So... Um, these three I put on the back, and that definitely, uh, honestly, this game is pretty going pretty well. I don't have to downgrade too much. I can upgrade quite a lot, so that is not too bad. That's pretty good. So, uh, Morganite is saying I had that happen. I uh, probably like what I said about uh, what I said about the the bad rule book. I had that happen with Davin's journey for the solo mode. I love the game with other players, but the solo mode has uh, rules are not good. Generally, put me in a bad mood trying to decipher them. Oh no, you can't be serious. I've only played multiplayer so far as well. Twice, I think, only. And I really like it. I haven't played the solo mode yet, but the o like I'm still debating whether to keep the game in my collection or not. And the reason I would keep it in my collection is if the solo mode were good. Because that game is pretty complex. I'm not going to play with a lot of other people because it's pretty complex, right? Um, it would have to have a really solid solo mode. And if you say it doesn't, oh no. Oh no, that's bad. That's bad news. That's seriously bad news. Okay, then I will try to play the solo mode as soon as possible because I might, I don't know if, if that will have any staying power in my collection then. So, um, we have enemy, the fourth enemy number four, um, nine health only, but they have that arrow ranged. Automatic initial damage unless you discard unused card. Oh, yeah, I will discard the unused card for sure. <laughs> I will definitely do that. Um, so, we need to hit a uh, damage of nine which I can do here. And initiative of seven, which I can also do. Uh, let me do it like this here. Okay, I think I got something. So, initiative of seven, I have five, but I will use the booster, so that's seven, right? Then, so that's fine, no initial damage. Then I have nine attack here because of that gray, of that gray element, nine health, so that's perfect. So we have the perfect victory here, right, for that enemy. Because no initial damage and also no no um, like other damage, combat damage. So we get five experience. I will well I will just upgrade these two. This one will be level three, and this one will be level two. And then I will also discard my unused card to not receive that ranged initial damage. So you see, like these enemies all like have also different uh, different ways of like holding you, of like kind of challenging you, right? So four more cards. Uh, Morganite is saying, if you can figure out the solo mode for Darwin's journey, let me know. 
I will try to remember that. If not, hit me up in like, I don't know, hit me up towards the end of the year. Like October, no, let's say like November, maybe December. Hit me up there in case I forget to tell you. Until then, I think I will have prayed the solo mode at least once. And if I don't, and then you can check Board Game Geek. <laughs> if the game is not in my collection anymore, <laughs> then you know how that went. <laughs> All right, so um, enemy number one is 17 HP and five... Um, five initiative, seventeen damage. You got the th no way. Can I get half at least? Oh, I don't even know if I can get half. Right, six. Oh, oh no. I don't have a red card. Oh no, that red card was the one I just discarded. Right. Oh no, I would have needed that now. Okay, so I can do six damage here with the with the yellow element card. Right, I can do that, and then I would still need seventeen. Divided by two, so I still need nine. I still need three. No, I can't do it. But I can at least do the initiative. Oh, I don't get any XP now. Oh, that's oh, that's bad. But okay, I mean the rest of the game went really well so far. So no, actually, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I, oh no, no, I can't do that. Forget it. Well, okay, I think there's no other way to do it. But let's just do it like this. So initiative five. I have five. That's fine. No initial damage. I'm cool. Um. I do six damage, it needs 17, that's not even half, so I don't get any XP, but I get damage of three. So let me soak that with, well, with that one, I suppose. Yeah, with that one here. Yeah, I guess so. Put these in the back. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we can still go another round. Okay, I hope we can upgrade at least one more card, maybe even two. Didi is saying there's a good chance there will be several YouTube tutorials on how to solo that one by then. And Morgan is saying, I certainly hope so. There probably already are solo videos out there. I was planning to record one at some point as well, but as I just said earlier, it's always kind of hard for me to actually like put out all the videos I would like to. I have a list of like 40 to 50 videos I still want to do, and that's only the most important ones. I think I have like hundreds of videos I want to do, but I don't have the time. <laughs> I would have to push, pull, push out like seven videos a week, like one video each day, but with a full day job, that's not possible. Like, even three videos a week is pretty tough uh, currently with my full day job and everything. So, yeah. So, we have a journey, which is bad because we have on, almost only attack. Well, uh, journey number two, that is 12 I need to hit. Um, no way. No way I can do that. I can only have, like, five... Can I get at least seven? Yeah, I can at least get half. So that's fine. I can at least get half. And I need to discard three cards. Yeah, I need to discard all the other cards as time penalty. But I can at least upgrade up to six. You know what? Let's upgrade these two here. That's exactly six. Like this. Okay, that's fine. And we're through with region number three. We're certainly... Uh, we're, we're, we're soon done. Okay. Wow. That took me now 45 minutes. Well, we need another 10 to 15 minutes to for the game to end. Yeah. So it says, like I think the game says, like, 30 hours it takes. Uh, 30 hours, sorry. <laughs> Not 30 hours. 30 minutes, of course. <laughs> That's a 30-hour game. Have fun. <laughs> the rule book has 300 pages. No, uh, 30 minutes. Um, I usually need, like, 40 to 45, to be honest. And now I'm talking a lot, so I need even longer, of course. So... Red Dragon in the back, and now we turn that to region number four, which is pretty brutal. Okay, um, let me just drink that, and I will have to refill my glass soon. <laughs> what are I saying? Dang, 30 hours, yeah? Well, it would be a, <laughs> yeah, like a 30 hour campaign game with 18 cards. That would be kind of impressive. If it doesn't get boring after 30 hours, Joe, I got a challenge for you. 18 cards. Campaign game, 30 hours without it getting stale. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be possible, but okay. All right, so let's continue. <laughs> I like the idea, actually. Okay, um, I'm, if, if you design it, I'm going to play it on the channel, I promise. Okay, so um, I got a journey one here, 14 we need to hit. I got six here. Well, that's something. Oh, it's blue. It's blue. Eight, nine. Ah, it's still not enough. No, it's still not enough. But okay, let's just work a little bit with it that way. Okay. Like this. So, um, I'm doing like uh, blue here, right? So that's six plus two. That is 
no, quite, no, no, I mean six plus one over there, that is seven. And then I could also, because that's blue and that is blue journey here, I could also take the last card, the fourth card for that, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not gonna hit 14 anyway. So um, that is fine, I hit half of it at least. So I will have to discard two cards because of the time penalty, but I have seven to upgrade. That is wonderful. There are no red shields here, that is a shame. But I will just upgrade these two here, like this. That is pretty nice. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Okay, let's continue. One, two, three, four. Oh, the Game Crafter just ended chat. Welcome, I'm really happy you could make it. Really cool that you're here. Um, well, we are playing Dragons of Etchingstone by Joe Cliffel. Um, and stick around to the end of this playthrough. I have a little something I want to show you then after that. And um, we are currently in journey number f uh, in, in region number four. So you're right in time um, because we're almost at the boss. We are still alive, which is something, right? <laughs> All right, so let's continue. We have journey number three here. So that is 12. We need to hit 12. So let's see. We don't have, oh, we don't have any movement. I don't actually know what happens if you don't have any movement, if you can't do anything. So I probably just take, I just don't do nothing, right? I don't get any XP and I'll just get the time penalty and discard three cards, I suppose. That's what I do. So uh, let me just leave it like this. That's fine. Um, yeah, let's just uh, discard two for the time penalty and also these three. Morganite is saying being alive is indeed half the battle. Well, <laughs> kind of, although, I think I've never died during the game, like while journeying. But I mean, of course, I mean, uh, you if you arrive at the dragon with like no, almost no upgraded cards, that's not very good either, right? One, two, three, four. Ah, I think that's the last round before the battle. So journey number two, 13, we need to hit nine. Oh, 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 we can get it. We can actually hit it. And that's some upgrades we desperately need. Yeah, we desperately need, okay. so. I need to hit 13, gray. So I have nine here, plus two, that's, no, no, wait. Yeah, I have nine, plus four, that's 13. That's exactly what we need. So uh, no penalty, and we get six to upgrade. Um, I will upgrade this one here for sure. And then we still have four, so either that or that. Attack or movement, I think we have, what do we have more of? I didn't pay attention. Um, which one do I rather want to upgrade? I attack rather, right? Yeah, let me, because um, this one is just a higher, this one is, has higher shields. Let's do that. Yeah, and I need shields for the dragon later on. So that's fine. Okay, um, so we put these in the back and then one, two, three. Yeah, that's it. So we are through the last region, my friends. We are now facing the dragon. But before that, I need to get a few, a little bit more to drink because it's just really hot here. And that's not going to change soon, I think. So um, as a preparation, what we do is now we take the region card and put that at the back and we take the dragon and we put the dragon like halfway like we did with the region card, right? And while you can take a look at this and admire these cards here, um, let me just get a bit more to drink. Uh, just fill up my glass. So let me see. Mm -hmm. Always never forget to hydrate, right? You know that as a long time view of my channel, possibly, but that's very important. All right. Uh, Gamecraft is saying, gotta stay hydrated. Yes, I agree. And Lord Richard, thank you so much for the donation. That is very, 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 very kind of you. I really, really appreciate that. That's very generous. Um, so that is the best, you're saying. Well, I would not sign, I, I would not put my signature under that sentence, but I'm very glad you enjoy my content. <laughs> okay, so are you all ready for the boss fight? So let's hope I remember the boss fight correctly because that one works differently. And the game crafters need chat, so you can maybe correct me if I'm doing it wrong. So um, we take the top seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now this is where the game becomes a little bit more, a, a bit more, diff, more difficult to handle because you have more cards here. But believe me, it's possible. You can actually, if you hold it like this, 
I have large hands, so I do have like a little advantage here. But if you hold it like this and you can like kind of rearrange the cards, it is possible. But it becomes a little bit more fiddly. Um, but it's actually a pretty cool concept because now we have seven cards to work with. We don't look at this one more as reference because we have the reference up here. We need to defeat the dragon. And we do two steps. First of all, we have a journey up here. Journey values we need to hit. And then we have, um, then we have damage values we need to hit. Let's start with the journey first. We have three values we can hit, 20, 23, or 28. If we go higher, if we hit a higher value, we have a less penalty and thus more cards for the attack after that, right? So we want to hit the value as high as possible. If we can't even hit the lowest one, then we, I think we lose immediately. It's, it never happened to me, but I have to look it up, but I think we lose then. So what we do now with these seven cards is we now do two sets of a journey. So we do exactly the same thing we did during the journey, right? like two movement sets, just um, and we can make one of them stronger if we have a red movement set because, well, it's the red dragon, right? So let's see, movement, we have five, 12 movement here. Look at this, that is insane. We have 12 movement here with the yellow card. So we already have 12. We need at least eight more. We have nine movement here. That is, oh, but we don't have a red card for that. Ah, that is kind of bad. But okay, we would have five movement at least. So we have these two sets so far, 12 movement and five movement because we don't have the red card for that. Okay, there is actually a uh, possibility to fuse cards. So you can pay, put two cards with the same color, like put the yellow one behind the other the yellow one, then the card is gone, but then you can change the color of that, of that card. That is possible. I might want to do it this time, but I'm not quite sure yet. So at the moment, you have 17 movement. Then what we need is boosters. We would have two boosters here, right? Um, of two and of three, that's plus five. So we would be at 17 plus five, 22. Ah, that is not great, right? But it's okay, I guess. That's the best we can do at the moment, I think. Um, let me just see if I missed something. 12. That one would be five yeah well we can also just take this one here and put that behind here so let me just check that so we have 12 here then we would have ah, it doesn't matter what i do it doesn't matter what i do at all no nope. yeah we will get to 22 only that's all we can do well okay then we go get, go to 22 and now you see 23 we didn't hit we only hit 20. that is pretty bad but now we discard all the seven cards that we've used, plus the three penalty cards. All right, first part of the battle is done. Now we need to do the attack. So one, two, we now take all cards that are left, should be six, yeah. That's not good. Like the worst thing that can happen is that you only have five cards. I have now six, that is not good at all. But let's hope that we can still make it, right? So, um, oh, it doesn't look good at all. Does not look good at all, but 10. Okay, I get 10 damage here plus nine. That's 19 damage, like nine here, right? Plus um, the gray one and here 10 for the blue one. And then we also get a booster of plus three and one of plus two. So that is nine, 19, 21. That's 24 damage. All right, the least we need to hit is 20, but we also need to look at initiative here. The base initiative is nine and we have an initiative of 10. That's fine. We don't take any initial damage. That is great. So we do 24 damage. That is the lowest threshold here. So 22, we actually made it, but we now receive 27 damage. What happens now is, remember, we can only downgrade cards once and we need to be able to soak all 27 damage and then we win. If we can't soak 27 damage, then we lose. And I don't think we can soak 27 damage. We don't have any red shields, do we? No, because red shields could soak double. We don't have any, so I think that's it. So 27 minus three, that is 24. Um, 24 minus that's 21, that is 17, that is 11, oh, come on. That is two, so we add nine. 
And here we can soak another three, so we are at six. Well, six damage we cannot soak. And I just had another game today, just to kind of get into the groove, so I remember how the rules work again, right? And I lost the game with five as well. All other games before that, like the last three or four games before that, are all won. But today is not my day. So Morganite is saying that, right? Rip. And Gamecraft is saying, so fatalistic. Well, <laughs> yeah, six um, damage that we couldn't soak. So we unfortunately lost against the Red Dragon. Um, that's That was pretty unfortunate. I think we did really well during the journeys. But I think it also came down a little bit uh, to a little bit of bad luck at the end. Did he say stuff happens? Yeah, stuff happens. That is pretty much true. Yeah, and that is uh, Drawings of Etchin' Stone by Joe Cliffville, um, a game I thoroughly enjoy. Um, I think it's pretty incredible um, how much strategy and tactic, like especially tactics, are in like these 18 cards. I think that's pretty, um, pretty incredible. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, um, I, I think it's pretty good how much you can put into these 18 cards. Um, the game does have a lot of rules. These rules you see here, these are definitely not the rules, right? This is just, these are just um, like a few um, reminders of the, the most important things. The rules I think are like 20 or 25 pages. I'm not kidding. Like this is why the rules are not in here because they are just massive because this game is quite complicated. It looks easier when somebody explains it to you, I'd say. But, um, so, yeah. A lot of rules, but a very, very good game. And this is where, like, this little surprise comes in. Um, I will do another, like, big video towards the end of the year, I think, to, like, summarize, um, summarize all the games. I, I've granted those two, but this game definitely gets an Ace of Games award for me, because I think it's really good for an 18 card game. At the moment, it is my most favorite in-hand card game, um, like of the published ones. So, um, yeah. So I would say, um, like, congratulations. Um, <laughs> that um, definitely deserving of the Golden Ace of Games award. I think this is an incredibly good game. Um, and also for the Game Crafter, I would definitely send you uh, the logo in case you want to implement it on your page. It's an incredible game. If you like in-hand card games, if you are not afraid of a little bit more rules and of a longer playtime, it takes like 30 to 45 minutes, right? Um, then I can highly suggest that one. Uh, Lord Richard is asking what's the name of the game. It's Dragons of Etchin' Stone. I will put, try to put it, I will try to think of putting a link in the pinned comment or the description after the live stream. I hope that I will, um, I will not forget. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was Dragons of Action. So, a really, really good game. And also, today, just today, I learned that there is an expansion on the way that looks really good. Um, the expansion has, like, characters you play with because you don't have that here. And I think each character has, like, four specific cards specific to them. And you just exchange, like, cards, I think, from here with these four cards. And so it becomes a little bit more asymmetric, which I think is really interesting. Really, really interesting. So, yeah. That was my playthrough. Um, Didi is saying um, you still found the last spaceship stream more exciting. It was rather thriller-like. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I think nothing will very soon beat that stream because that was incredibly exciting. 